And the first game we're going to play is a one-way info gap. In this game, we're going to have the same rules throughout the whole game. Okay, and I'm going to begin by asking her um, what her intentions are. I pick a card, and my goal is to be safe. I'm not quite sure what you plan to do. Please explain. I intend to go out on the water. I think we might have a match. <laughs> Let's place it in number one. Okay. Um, what is your goal? I plan to test my endurance. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if I know what your intentions are. Can you tell me what, you, what you're going to do? My goal is to go into the mountains. I think we have a match. <laughs> Let's put it in two. Okay. Um, let's see, what will you do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am going to go for a trip. Go for a trip. I'm not sure um, what you're going to do. Could you please explain some more? I plan to go high in the sky. Okay, I'm pretty sure we have a match. Okay, let's stop for a second. And so far, person A, who's been person A, asking all the questions, okay? And person B has been answering it. So this is an example of doing an info gap activity as a one-way gap, where one person asks all the questions and then the other person answers all the questions. It's possible to use the same materials, the same info gap activity, and make it a two-way gap, which is usually more interesting for the students. So let's see how a two-way gap, how you modify it to make it a two-way gap. Okay, so this time I would start as person A. So what is your goal? My goal is to um, be in a recital. I'm not quite sure of your intentions. Can you tell me more? Um, I plan on making some music. Mm, I think we have a match. Um, what are you going to do? I plan to go out on the water. Okay, I'm still not sure what your plans are. Could you tell me more? My goal is to catch dinner. I think we have a match. What are your intentions? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a celebration. Mm. I'm not quite sure. Can you tell me more? Um, I intend to blow out some candles. Mm. I think we have a match. Can you discuss which square you're going to put that in? Oh, we're going to put that in three. So just like in an ESL class, there may be some confusion <laughs> between uh, the people about where things go. What should a teacher do in that situation? If you notice that your ESL students or your students um, didn't put things in the right place, I might ask them to clarify the directions of where to put the pieces mm -hmm. each time or to make sure they're in agreement before they start the game. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just need to let it go and th they'll figure it out, right? They'll find out that when they get towards the end of completing the board that something isn't right. They must have made a mistake somewhere along the way. It's okay to let them 
figure that out and eventually see if they can fix it. If they get too stuck, then you want to help them get unstuck. Okay. So another way that you could play this is to take your pieces off and not have a numbered board mm -hmm. and take a board that is completely blank. Mm -hmm. And that makes the game harder. So if I stated, said, what are your intentions? Oh, hang on a second. I just want to say, what kind of language do you expect your students to know if you're going to give them a grid that doesn't have any numbers? Uh, directions, giving directions, or explaining mm -hmm. steps. They're going to have to know the language of the grid, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to have to know columns right. and rows. They're going to have to know those ordinal numbers, first, second, third, right. uh, or maybe language like upper left hand, lower right hand, or something like that to be able to explain it. So if your students are comfortable with that or you want to add that challenge, you can use the grids without the numbers. If they're lower level, the, grid, the numbered grids are easier to work with. So what, what does that sound like when you do it? Let's say a two-way gap without the numbers. Um, what are your intentions? My intent, I intend to um, keep in contact with somebody. Okay, I think we have a match. Uh, let's put that in the bottom left-hand corner. Okay. Okay, great. So we've got three so far. If you take the divider down, you can see that if you're in agreement so far or not. Right? Are you? I would have to turn my board around. Yep. Have you made the matches so far? So far. Right. Looks good. Let's talk about how we could take those same pieces and make it easier for a lower level group of students. Let's clear the board and put up the divider again. Now their original Swabot was to state intentions and the situation was left open actually. There were leisure time activities there, you know, there was uh, hobbies, studying, right? Uh, there were different kinds of situations there, so it wasn't a real fixed situation for that SWBOT. Um, a lower level SWBOT would be to identify. Um, identify things people are doing, let's say, or uh, identify people and places uh, in those pictures. So with identify, the, swabot, the functional language is usually very basic. Something like, this is a blank. Uh, it is blank. Um, can you give us some examples, a couple of turns perhaps in a two-way format of identify using those uh, items? So we might pose it like, um, what are you doing? What am I doing? Let's see. So, in this picture, I am, um, there are two children. Oh, can you tell me a little bit more? They are practicing a musical instrument. Okay, I think we have a match. Okay, and even if students are just learning some basic vocabulary, it's okay to even say they are playing piano. the piano. You know, that may be new vocabulary. So um, it's okay to even, to even use that, that term. When you're describing it, it's harder. Yeah. A musical instrument is harder than this is a piano, right? So for just basic vocabulary building, it's okay to just identify. Okay, and let's put that in the top, the top upper right corner. Um, Tell me about your card. Describe your card. I am graduating from high school. Okay. I think we have a match. Okay. Okay, so this time we're going to change the Swabot to from state intentions to invite, right? Sometimes it's fun to imagine a situation. Like let's imagine that you two are college roommates, okay? And you're making invitations to each other for, you know, there's an upcoming break. And you have an opportunity to do some different things over break. And you're sitting around in your, in your dorm room talking about what things you might do after the term is over. 
how would that would that change your invitation in any way? Um, I'll personalize it. So, yeah. Eva, would you like to fly home with me for break? Or Rebecca, I'd love to fly home with you <laughs> on break. Uh, how about far right column in the middle? Okay. So great. So right away, by adding a different situation and making it more personal, that adds a little enthusiasm to your voice. You know, using each other's names. You know, sure, I'd love to. When do you want to go? You might even extend the conversation a little bit longer if you wanted to. Okay. Rebecca, I think it'd be very fun for us to go to the beach. Do you want to go swimming with me? Sure. That sounds like fun. Let's put this in the very right column, bottom corner. Eva, yes. would you like to celebrate a birthday party with me? Uh, I'd love to. Whose birthday is it? It is my dad's birthday. Okay. I think we have a match. <laughs> I think so um, too. How about third column all the way at the bottom? Bottom row. Third column from the left, <laughs> bottom row. So okay. far we've seen um, several different swabots, one-way gaps and two-way gaps, right? Wonderful. I think we've got it.